Oh, it says here, okay, nope, this hasn't worked. So there is a full five marks. That's wrong, and it's zero marks. Oops. Moving on to question nine. Oh, question nine just says, nope. That's quite good. Let's see what that is as a percentage. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now if you've just come from Astrid's channel, welcome! This video is a collaboration with Astrid who is a university student at the University of Cambridge. Astrid did do her A-level maths a couple of years ago and I challenged Astrid to have a go at an A-level maths paper. So on her channel she had a go at doing the paper and let's find out whether it was successful or not. Also I should mention that Astrid now studies English at Cambridge so um, doesn't really do much maths. Just take that into consideration. So what I've got here is I've got the mark scheme and I've actually done the solutions myself. And then on my iPad, we've got Astrid's solutions. And the first thing that it says is, sorry, Harry, for the absolute state of my answers. Don't worry, it's fine. As long as the answers are correct, then that's all we need. So the first question was an expanding brackets question. And the correct answer is 2x squared minus nine. Then the next question was part of question one as well, and the answer was minus 10. Now we can see here, Astrid put minus 10 x cubed. It should really be minus 10, but on the mark scheme, it does say condone minus 10 x cubed. So we'll give you that. So you've got four marks. Question two was a third question. Now, oh, it says here, okay, nope, this hasn't worked. So let's have a look at the solution. The first thing that they've done is multiplied by three minus root five, which is correct. And they've done that on top and bottom. So that's a good start. What I did when I did this is I said root 20 is root four times five, because then what I can do with that is make that two root five, because the square root of four is two. So then I substituted that back in and it made it a little bit easier. Um, we can give one mark for doing that. We can give you one mark for that four, that's two marks. And then can we give an extra mark somewhere? I don't think we can because the next mark is for a fully correct and simplified fraction. And then the last mark is the answer mark. So it's one mark there and one mark there. Moving on. The next question was a simultaneous equations question and we had a circle and straight line. First mark is there. Then the next mark is correct three term quadratic in solvable form, which is there. It's going well. Then the next mark is an attempt to solve the quadratic. So yes and yes. That's correct. And then correct x values and correct y values. So substituting those back in, minus 29 over 5 and minus 5. There is a full five marks for question three. Question four was a quadratics question, but it was actually a disguised quadratic. First of all, Astrid has shouted R. So um, there was a little bit of frustration on this one. I can understand. What we needed to do was we needed to solve 2y to the power of a half minus 7y to the power of a quarter plus 3 equals 0. I don't understand. I don't understand. The first thing the mark scheme says is let y to the power of a quarter equal x. There is a few ways you can do this question. The first thing we did here was let a equal y to the half. So yes, you've just not used x, but I don't think that's going to work. Let's have a look and let's see what we get when we solve that, just making sure those are correct. That gives us some strange values. Now, Ashley's tried to factorise that there, but it's actually not factorizable because what we get is that. We get a nice third. Let's see where we can dish out some marks. I don't think we're going to be able to dish out any. Uh-oh. I'm going to give one mark for an attempt to substitute. But that's it. Okay. Moving on to question five. Looking at the mark scheme here, it just says two to the minus six. That is correct. 
And that question is worth two marks. Then the next one was a index simplification. What we needed to do here was to get everything in the form two to the power p. The first thing you did was correct. I'm gonna look at my solutions here because I can't follow that mark scheme. That's correct what we did there because that was a four to the, yeah, that's correct. Now, what we needed to do there is we can say eight is equal to two cubed because two times two times two is eight. Two times two is four times two is eight. That is the same as two cubed multiplied by two to the four over three. Now we've got a multiplication there, so we can use an index law and we can say that that's two. And because we're multiplying, we add the powers. So it's gonna be two to the power of three plus four over three, which is two to the power of 13 over three. So you were very, very close. We can give two marks for that. One mark for an attempt to express both terms as a power of two, which you have done there, so that's one mark. And then the next is that mark, and then the third one would have been the answer. So we got two marks for that question. For question six, we needed to turn a quadratic into... Oh God, what's it called? Completed square form. And this one was correct. So we can give all four marks for that question. Oh, do I be mean here? This squared here should actually be there. So what that means is that answer is wrong. But if we look above, we can see that the squared is outside the bracket there. So I'll let you have it. I'll give you four marks. Part two, we needed to work out the maximum of that quadratic and 322 was correct. You just forgot any brackets, but that's fine. So that is an extra two marks. Question seven was a sketch quadratic question and Astrid said, I can't remember how to do this. Help. I'll give you some help. Sketch y equals x squared times three minus x. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna set that equal to zero. So x squared multiplied by three minus x equal to zero. Therefore, that means x squared can be equal to zero or three minus x can be equal to zero. Then that means that x here is either plus or minus zero. Now, I know there's no such thing as a negative zero or even a positive zero. We don't know whether it's positive or negative, but the reason we put positive or negative zero is to indicate a bounce at zero. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. So I'm going to write there plus or minus zero. And then three minus x equals zero, so x must be equal to three. What that means is if we draw ourselves some axes here, we can see here that looking at the graph, if we were to expand those brackets, it would be y equals minus x cubed plus three x squared. And that means it's a negative cubic graph. So it's going to come down from here. I'm gonna draw that bit better. It's actually gonna come down like that. But then when it reaches zero, because we've got the plus and minus, it's gonna bounce back up. So it's actually gonna bounce back up like that. Then we've got an x value of three, so it needs to come back down to the x axis, <laughs> back down to the x axis at zero. So it's gonna start coming back down and then it's gonna look something like that. So unfortunately we didn't have anything to mark there, so that's wrong. I need zero marks. Oops. The second part of the question wanted the equation of the graph if it was moved two units in the positive x direction. So Astrid just added a plus two onto the graph and that would be correct if it was moving in the y axis, but it's a little bit different because it's moving in the x axis. So what you should have done is actually replaced x with x minus two. We should have got y equals x minus two squared multiplied by three minus x minus two. So therefore y will be equal to x minus two squared times My desk is squeaking. five minus x. So I'm afraid that's 
zero. Question seven, part three. We had a half outside of the equation of the graph. And Astrid said, stretch scale factor a half parallel to the x-axis. Okay. Very, very close. It should have been parallel to the y-axis. We can give you one mark for using the word stretch. So for question seven, we got one mark. Question eight, Astrid said, I did it. You did. It was a proof question, I think. We got the answer, so we can have three marks there. Then question two, or the second part, just says, nope. So let's see what we needed to do. It basically needed you to say, as h tends towards zero, the gradient will be 20. But we didn't get an answer for that one, so we're just gonna put a cross. The third part says, I can't remember what the normal is. Is it gradient equals zero? Can I have a point for trying, please? Yeah, we'll give you one point. The gradient is parallel, no, it's not. It's perpendicular to the tangent. Therefore, the perpendicular gradient is the negative reciprocal. So it would be one over 20 with a minus sign. So minus one over 20, it should have said that in the first place. And then you could have substituted that into y equals mx plus c to find the, what were we trying to find? The y coordinate when x was zero. Your answer for that one would have been 50 and a quarter. Okay, moving on to question nine. Oh, question nine just says, nope. Then the next three parts we don't have an answer to, but it's absolutely fine. Do I give you one mark for working that out? Hmm, no. Sorry, Astrid. <laughs> Part three said a second tangent to the circle is parallel to the tangent at A, and we needed to work out the equation of that second tangent. What we needed to do was work out the equation of that tangent. So if we worked out the length of the radius there, it would have been the same length because they're both two radii or radius, whichever one it is. And then we could have added that on from the center to give us that point there and worked out the equation. But I'm not going to bore you with that. Let's move on. Part four said another circle has centre at the origin O and radius R. The circle lies wholly inside the first circle. Find the set of possible values for R. Uh, we didn't get an answer, I don't think, here. That's okay. No worries. Moving on to question 11. I can't remember this either. It's fine. It's fine. I can see an integration sign. Let's see what the mark scheme says. We really needed to differentiate, so we needed to do the other thing. <laughs> it says clueless. First of all, we had y equals 4x squared plus ax to the minus 1 plus 5. If we differentiate that, we get 8x minus ax to the minus 2. Now the stationary point is at dy on dx equals 0. Then if I factorise an x out, Siri, go away, that will be equal to 0. So x equals 0 or 8 minus ax to the minus 3 equals zero. So we're going to get a times x to the minus three equals eight. Hopefully I've not lost anybody just yet. Following the mark scheme, the next thing that they did, because we were told y equals 32, 4x squared plus a times x to the minus one plus five equals 32. Substituting in our value for a, that will, Siri, that means 12x squared will be equal to 27. And then if we square root both sides, we will get a positive or negative, but we can just take the positive. Therefore, I can substitute that back into a equals 8x cubed. So a will be equal to 27. We do have a dy on dx as a question mark. I think you can have two marks for that. I'll be nice. You can have two marks for putting dy dx. There is no uh, differentiation there, but it's all right. I'm feeling nice. And Astrid did say at the end, please be nice. I hope I have. Now all we need to do is add all of the marks up and find out whether Astrid has passed or failed. Astrid did message and say that she wanted 30%. So let's find out whether she's got 30% or not. We got 32. That's quite good. What's it out of? Let me have a look. 72. Let's see what that is as a percentage. That is 44%. That 
is very, very good. Consider Astrid has not done maths, she's an English student at Cambridge, I think you've done pretty well. So there we go, that was today's video. I really, really do hope that you enjoyed this video. My teacher cap was on throughout the whole of this video. Make sure to head over to Astrid's channel, all her links will be in the description down below. And make sure to follow me over on my Instagram to keep updated with my life if you want to be updated with it. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Sorry, Astrid. <laughs>